Good morning. Uh, today we are going to speak to Dr. Nkosinati Mpalami. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, doctor, can you please share with us how did you become a researcher? Well, I think I became a researcher about uh, 10 years ago when I started attending conferences, AMISA conferences and uh, SAMSTE conferences. These are the associations uh, in mathematics and science. So um, the idea was that um, it is always advisable to in, uh, to, do, to do research so that it informs our teaching. So um, one cannot really do uh, teaching and learning well if that is not informed by the research. So that's when I uh, started getting interested in research. Thank you so much, Doctor. And what are you currently working on? Um, I'm currently working on two areas. The first one, I'm looking at the integration of a universal design for learning into the teaching of mathematics. And the second one is um, the teaching of uh, mathematics in multilingual settings. And to, I'm currently focusing on the issues of translanguaging, uh, how that um, enables learners from various linguistical backgrounds to understand mathematical concepts. Thank you so much. Touching on languages, how can home language make mathematics easy? For, for learners? Well, uh, recent research shows that <clears throat> um, if we force learners to learn mathematics in one language, which is, uh, the, which is usually English, then we are denying many of them uh, access into the subject. But if we allow them to use their mother tongue or their home languages um, uh, to, to, to discuss or even to think, because before you can think uh, in English, you think in your own home language. So um, that is, is paving a way okay. uh, for many learners now to have access into mathematics because we, through translanguaging, we are encouraging them. And as we, we plan our lessons, we plan them uh, such that learners are able to use various languages. Um, even the languages that we might not be uh, fluent in ourselves, uh, but we allow learners to use them uh, to make meaning of uh, mathematical concepts. So we indeed encourage everybody, every teacher, every lecturer to allow students or learners to use their home languages um, to unpack complex mathematical concepts. Thank you. And in contribution to that, that means it will also give them a new concept and they will be able to broaden their vocabulary being able to express themselves in their mother tongue. That is correct. Um, it is very easy um, for learners to, when they, even because uh, some critics are saying, so if you allow them to use their home uh, languages and then you find that uh, there are maybe more than three home languages in that classroom. How will others benefit from that? So our argument is that if they are able to uh, unpack or explain that mathematical concept in their 
mother tongue. Then it is easier even for other students who are not even uh, the speakers of that language to, yes, to understand. To understand. Um, now given the context of uh, our country where uh, people uh, are multilingual by nature, then it, it, it makes um, mathematics learning even more interesting. Unlike when we confine uh, the learning and teaching of mathematics to English or maybe Africans. Okay. So in a way, learners even then learn even other languages. They learn both mathematics and the other languages as well, which is um, quite important because somebody used an analogy to say that um, if you can uh, jump with one leg, then if you have the second leg, then it's even better because you can walk better. So if you know one language and then you learn other languages, then you are better equipped uh, not only uh, to learn mathematics, but also to be able to interact with other people. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then coming back to your work, can you share with us how multiple representation can make mathematics accessible. Okay, so um, within the UDL framework, there is that uh, principle which is multiple means of representation. Now the idea is that um, um, learners are different and if we, 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 we agree on that one that learners learn differently, uh, then we are saying instead of uh, presenting a concept using, uh, as usual, we like to use a symbolic um, a representation in mathematics, then we are saying there will be a few learners who will feel comfortable with the, 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 the numbers and the likes. What if um, we introduce other things? For example, we can use manipulatives. We can use graphs for the same concept. Yes. We can use graphs. We can use tables. We can even ask learners to act that. Um, so every time when we plan for uh, lessons, we should bear that in mind that people are different, learners are different, therefore we should uh, present that concept in different ways yes. uh, so that if they miss, for those who are, are not interested in the symbols, then we can use concrete materials, we can use other forms of representation and that makes it easier for learners to, to, to have access to that particular mathematical concept that you are teaching on the particular day. Unlike when you just come and uh, do X and Y, and then other learners are left out because they are not interested in that one. So I think the, 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 the premise to that one is that Schulman, uh, way back in 1986, uh, uh, when he was talking about pedagogical content knowledge, amongst that he said, as teachers, we should know our learners. Okay. So the starting point should be, as a, as a lecturer, I should know my learners, I should know my students, so that I know, oh, these ones are interested in, uh, they learn better if I use this representation. Yes. These ones learn better if I use that one. So that I don't come to class with just one way of presenting the, the, the session, but I should have different ones. Others um, are more interested in technology. So why don't I uh, bring in some element of technology to present the very same concept? So that one concept is taught in multiple representations. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and then it fosters a, a, a positive engagement that, and easier way of learning. That is true. Yes. Um, so that um, uh, universal design for learning uh, framework 
uh, brings those other uh, two dimensions, a uh, multiple means of engagement, yes. as you're saying, okay. and then multiple means of, um, which is this other one now. <laughs> yeah, um, but it is slipping off my mind. However, the multiple means of engagement is also very important because now we are seeing if learners, uh, if you present various things that will attract them to the lesson, then they, will, they are able to participate. Yes. But if you only present it, they know that he's going to use the whiteboard, then they are not interested, hence mm -hmm. they are not able to fully participate. But if you bring various things, the, 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 the engagement also increases. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. And then, are there any Catholic niche area in your field of uh, study? Yes, um, I think the, um, yeah, at the moment, <laughs> I'll say that because I'm like interested in this tool, so I would identify those as my niche areas, but I, and of course I have um, published uh, uh, in both um, okay. multiple means of representation and then uh, the use of uh, home languages in studying or in learning mathematics. So I'm not yet decided and also with my postgraduate students I have um, divided them into two. So there are those that are uh, doing their masters and doctoral degrees in uh, projects in uh, multi, um, universal design for learning, and there are those that are focusing on translanguaging. Okay. So I haven't yet decided which side do I go, but I think I like both of them mm -hmm. because they are uh, they, they 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 assist learners to have access into. Uh, the so-called complex mathematical uh, ideas. So these two frameworks make them easier to, to, to enjoy mathematics. And so I would say for now, those are my two niche areas. Okay, no, thanks you so much, Doctor. And then concerning Vision 130, there is one tenants talking about the maximum societal impact with sustainable relationship, then how is your work contributing to that uh, societal impact? Yes, no, I think the, this is interesting. So with the um, uh, universal design for learning and specifically focusing on multiple means of representation, we are currently training teachers. Um, okay, maybe let me use the word workshopping teachers. Not okay. training. We are workshopping teachers uh, on the concept, and then we follow them into the schools to see how they are implementing the principles in their teaching. And then uh, we also use that as part of uh, uh, our, our, our what, a field for our students to collect data. So as we do that, we are also generating data, uh, which we can then um, okay. My post uh, my, my my what my st uh, post students uh, are using that masters and PhDs are using that data. So I think uh, that will have an impact in the long run because. Uh, the idea is to make teachers aware that uh, learners are different and therefore they should take, they should make an effort to learn or to study their own learners, to know each one of them and then begin to work with them. So we think in the long run this will have an impact um, in, in society. That's the first project that we are doing. Uh, and we okay, we, we we tried to apply for funding for that, but we couldn't get unfortunately. But we will still continue applying because we, if we get funding, then it will be easier. We will be able to uh, workshop many teachers okay. in, in this rural area yes. where we find ourselves in. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, what message can you give young aspiring uh, researchers? Well, I think the message is uh, short and simple, is that 
um, learning, teaching and learning must always be informed by research. So young scholars should always be interested in research, they should do research, so that that informs their teaching. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. And then, Doctor, apart from research, what are your other interests? Well, uh, I think the other interest is uh, working with the communities um, because, well, I believe that um, the our campus, the Godwa campus, is situated, it is the only campus in this area, the university campus. Therefore, it must indeed serve the communities around it. Mm. And because of that, we, um, I think, starting from 2022, we developed a, a community-based project where uh, the three lecturers is me and my two other lecturers, uh, colleagues, uh, Dr. Tsudit and Dr. Maraisani. We, um, together with the second year students uh, who are doing foundation phase, uh, we are working on a, uh, a project at the Magwani village okay. where we work with um, uh, young kids. So they come to the center. Initially, they used to come to the center for uh, meals after school. Okay. But then we said, uh, we, we, we negotiated with uh, the person responsible there that, what about if after eating, then we can teach them uh, mathematics. So this, is, this has been running. That's what we do. They come after school, um, they eat, and then we, we, we teach them for an hour or so. Um, we help them with the homework. Uh, and then the mathematics homework, and then we, we, we if, they are, if they don't have homeworks, we teach them new concepts. So in a way, uh, we are also helping our second year students to begin to love the communities, to begin to say, okay, we are saving the community for free. Because these days, when you do something, people expect some cash back. So we say, no, learn to give back to the community. To the community yes. And then, so we, there's this concept that we, we like, uh, I always say that we are developing you to become uh, community teachers. So uh, instead of just doing, getting your degree, yes. we want you to participate, feel it, serve the community for free. Then we, we hope uh, that this project will instill that responsibility in them that, okay, we, I have to serve the community. So yeah, that has been running well, and uh, we are at the moment trying to come up with a paper uh, to report the results that we see uh, from that project. Okay, no, it's, it's, it's quite a, a, a good thing that uh, students are contributing towards their communities. And then this is part of also the, the attributes of a, a, a graduate at a University of the Free State. Yes, and we would like to thank you, Doctor, for the good work that you are doing. And then we are say we are thankful for sharing with us. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.